of long lives and they were well lived. One of the veterans had an oak tree of a similar age to the Vernon Road oak growing in his front garden. He was a regular contributor to the local community newspaper and when he heard the news last year that the Vernon oak was to be felled, he responded with a short piece about his tree up there and its history. And he gave me a copy of the handwritten piece, and this is what he wrote. This is his handwriting here. It's called A Tree in the Streets. The contractor Amy's policy of removing some street trees to avoid potential roof damage to roads and pavements has aroused adverse comments. One such tree is in Burnham Road where we came to live in 1957. As it is suggested, the tree at the bottom of the road may be 130 years old. It would have been more than pension age when we first knew it. A pre-World War I photograph across the valley from Bradway, that's over there, shows a line of trees up the line of Vernon Road. Of that line, two other trees survive in addition to this one. One is in our front garden and the other one is in the front garden a few houses away. And how this came about is interesting. In 1957, there were nearly 40 houses in Vernon Road, mostly semi-detached, and a local builder, Mr Jones, then erected eight pairs of semi-detached houses in fields at the top of the road. We were told that the original plan was to have a traffic turnaround, but this was abandoned because of the upkeep costs. As a result, certain front gardens, including ours, were made bigger, and the oak tree came with it. Over the years, of course, We've had to remove hundreds of sacks of leaves, twigs and acorns and pay for the haircut periodically. Some roots across the front lawn are near the surface and produce a crop of mushrooms. As the tree is on the north side of the house, there's no major shading of sun. All in all, we think the trees are an asset for all. That's the end of Don's piece. For 60 years, Don and his family lived with the oak tree in the front garden. And it doesn't seem that they ever thought of getting rid of it. The house with the tree in the garden is now being sold. Let's hope that the new owners will continue to tolerate its fallen leaves, twigs and acorns. And come to think, as Don did, 
All in all, we think trees are an asset for all. They also deserve a long life, well lived. poem that I dedicate to Sheffield City Council. It's by Spike Milligan and it's Tree Kill. Tree Kill. Chip chop, chip chop, down comes a tree. Chip chop, wallop, plop, help, it's fallen on me. Chip chop, chip chop, down comes another. Chip chop, wee, what? That one fell on me mother. Chip chop, chip chop, crush on daddy's head. Chip chop, please stop or else we'll all be dead. <laughs> I would love to chop you, we would let them chop you from Shrub, maiden, field tree, street tree, nuisance, stump. <laughs> this is in the voice of Vernon. I magic myself, turning each spring into dancer and dance, or flutter and grace. Oh, this is one that's a bit like, I feel it's a bit like me. I wear their bright ribbons, hearts and messages. Who knew such love in spready middle age? <laughs> Grey tarmac, wonky curbs, yet I spring from the road, flaunting my feathers, my flowers, my finches. That'll do. Have you got some? <laughs> Facebook two or three days ago, uh, and it's really quite evocative. It's called The Opening by Johnny Ray Ryder Jr. 
A mighty wind blew night and day. It stole the oak tree's leaves away, then snapped its boughs and pulled its bark until the oak was tired and stark. But still the oak tree held its ground while other trees fell all around. The weary wind gave up and spoke, How can you still be standing, oak? The oak tree said, I know that you can break each branch of mine in two, carry every leaf away, shake my limbs and make me sway. But I have roots stretched in the earth, growing stronger since my birth. You'll never touch them, for you see they are the deepest part of me. Until today I wasn't sure of just how much I could endure. But now I've found, with thanks to you, I'm stronger than I ever knew. Actually, emphasises just what this means to the community. Uh, before I forget, I'd like to thank especially ah! to Margaret and Sally, who have been stalwarts in the campaign trying to save this uh, tree over the last two years. We've had countless meetings with them, with uh, representatives of the Door Village Society, Sheffield and Rotherham Wildlife Trust, <laughs> trying to be reasonable, and it defies all logic that this tree should go. This tree, look around, this tree is older than the houses here. They say, they say resurfacing the road is going to damage its roots and it might die. But oh, flipping heck, they built the whole housing estate, put a road down and a pavement and resurfaced it don't know how many times and it's still here. It can survive. We've had wheelchairs going past on both sides. But restricted access isn't a problem. It just defies all logic. And I, as a councillor serving on Sheffield City Council, are actually I'm ashamed of the way Sheffield Council have behaved. <laughs> opportunity to come up with a solution. There are simple, very, very cheap engineering solutions. In fact, the cheapest one is virtually just tarmac that around it, leaving it as it is, like was done the previous time the road was tarmac. And we could say this Obviously, tomorrow and Tuesday are going to be very difficult days in a number of ways. The tree is still standing. And I know a lot of us are determined that when it comes to the end of Tuesday, it will still be standing. We, I went in to see the people on Thursday afternoon. <laughs> Senior Executive Director of the Council is a last minute pre for to be reasonable. They were going to have a meeting on Friday to discuss it again. Unfortunately, I have to report I have heard nothing since, since then. But we are trying to make sure that this Vernon Oak survives. And no doubt I will see a number of you here bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Thank you once again for turning out and showing support to the community in this area, the residents of this road, and most importantly, the star of the show, Vernon Oak. Thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's here tonight. And I'm sorry I won't be able to be here tomorrow morning, but thank you everyone who will be here tomorrow morning. Um, he'll be legally <laughs> expressing the will of the community, which is being utterly defied across Sheffield. There are so many trees that have already been brought down that shouldn't have been. There are so many trees that we can still save. And it's very, very clear that Vernon Oak is a special case. It's a special tree. As we've said, this is older than the houses around. Now, uh, whenever I tweet the hashtag Save Sheffield Trees, I get called, oh, it's you, those tree huggers. Great! <laughs> Of course, it's much more 
than just the question of how beautiful and magnificent this is. We all know this is dealing with air pollution. <coughs> this is helping prevent flooding. We'll let a car through. Uh, one, one of the um, ironies of Rustling's Road was that Hunter's Bar flooded the morning after they cut those trees down. It wasn't tears. No. Uh, so, you know, we have got to a very bad place in Sheffield, but it's still all to fight for. And people are doing this peacefully, legally, and expressing the will of the community. So thank you for doing that. We're going to keep doing everything we can to support you. I think people know that on October 27, there's a court case when the council is trying to take a number of people to put a number of people in jail, including one of their own councillors, Councillor Alison Teal, who I just saw a second ago. Um, please come along on that occasion to show your view of that action as well. But please, let's hope that maybe we've all heard that there's a hurricane on the way. <laughs> maybe the planet is on our side with this one and on Bernard Oak's side. Thank you. Did you summon a meeting? <laughs> it's a poem. It's a committee poem. <laughs> this is actually a poem that was written by a schoolgirl called Martha, who lives over in Hillsborough earlier in the year, and it is um, based on the poem The Highwayman. Um, I think she's only about eight, ten or something. So this is by Martha, it's called The Highwayman. Amongst the darkness of the night, under the moon's light, shining on the rippling seas, a highway mum came running, running, running to get the Vayner Road trees. Martha lives on Vayner Road. She arrived at the break of dusk, not a smell except, except for musk. She cried, no, please, when she saw the yellow ribbon, ribbon, ribbon. There will be no Vayner Road trees. The next morning, the highway mum came yawning to phone up the BBC News. She talked for an hour, talked, talked, talked. That was the thing she was going to use. The BBC heard the news and they thought it was abuse. Nobody does that to our trees. So they invited the highway mum, invited, invited. They had to save those delicate leaves. They all joined up the next Friday, and on their way, they met people from far around who marched their way up, marched, marched. It made a shake in the ground. Now all the trees are fine, full of color and divine. You'd never guess what they did. They saved our trees, saved, saved. The highway mum is proud of her kids. Um, I'm here to say, come back next Sunday, Vernon will still be here. Yay! 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 Um, how do I know that? Because of the highway mum, actually, but, and all the other highway people. Um, the, is that they've chopped a lot of trees down, but the ones that are left include a great many of the ones that are most valued and that's why they're still standing because they, 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 the people from Amy know that when they come for those trees they'll meet the most resistance and this of course is a classic one of those trees. Now there are 400 trees left to chop this year. There are 40 working days this year. Work it out. At the moment they manage to do a couple of hit and runs each week and that's about it because so many people are in various ways managing to prevent it. So they're going to end up on Christmas Day looking at a ruin, looking at a policy that is a complete mess. And it's thanks to you, all of you. People keep saying, oh, you can't win, you can't win. We've lost a lot of our, our favourite trees. It's terrible. But we will win the moral battle and we'll save a lot of trees. Come Christmas, they'll be having to talk because they'll have run out of options.
I'm only speaking here today because Christopher Pennell, who's our chair of the Wildlife Trust, is on holiday and I know that he's done it. So I'm just representing him because he's done the most work for the Wildlife Trust and for this particular Christopher place. is a very articulate and experienced man, having been on the board of Natural England and held many other senior positions. So he uses articulate experience to make some very reasoned arguments why this tree should be saved both in meetings and in letters to the council and working with the community here of which is a part and it's just so disappointing that none of those arguments have been listened to we were really hopeful that some of the uh, special case trees if you like at least might be saved and i wish i could give you more positive news but it's you know i think what everybody is doing here is amazing and just keep up the good work thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Trees, but keep the old one is silver and the other gold that again plant new trees but keep the Trees, but keep the old one is silver and the other gold. Have you got it? Yeah. One, you better, you better come two, in. Three, four. Yeah, come in a bit closer. Come in, because you're seeing the theory come Come on, there's a Mr. Gove here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gove. <laughs> You did respond to the original. Hold the nose of Mr. Gove. Hey, James, it's Mr. Gove. Last new tree. 